Hello and welcome to today's ASI Donman webcast. Our topic today is online donations. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lisa Amaritis and I'm part of our client sales team here at ASI Asia Pacific. Today's webcast will run for under an hour, finishing at or before three o'clock. Before we get started, I'd like to run through a few housekeeping matters and ensure we're all up to speed with using the GoToWebinar system. So on the front middle of your screen, you will see the first slide of the presentation. And to the right, there is a control panel. You can minimize the control panel down to a toolbar by clicking on the orange grab tab arrow. This will allow you to view the presentation in full screen. You can then click on the arrow to bring the full control panel should you wish. Everyone has been muted upon entry to allow for clear audio and we won't be opening the lines today. But we do welcome your questions and comments, so, let, so please let me explain to you how you can interact with us. You can post your questions or comments at any time by using the question pane in the control panel. Just type your question and comment in the box provided and click on the second button, the send button. We'll address those questions and share any comments at the end of the main presentation. And if you have any technical difficulties with GoToWebinar, you can either use the question pane or use the raise hand function and I can assist you directly. So it's now my pleasure to introduce our presenters, Gary Lincoln and Murray Neal. Gary and Murray are senior tech uh, support analysts here at ASI Asia Pacific and they'll be taking you through today's topic, online donations. So I'll now hand over to Murray to get us started. And side of things as to what to do within Donman. So all of the stuff that I'll be doing will be the online. So I'm now going to swap across to my browser, which I'm using Chrome, um, but of course it doesn't really matter which one we're using. Now, Donman uh, ASI can provide you with a website, and I'm sure a lot of the people who are listening probably already have one of our websites. You'll see up the top here in the actual web address, they would all start with secure.donman.net.au client, and then in this case, I'm using this one called Demo New, which has been set up just to show you the sorts of things that can be done with the web pages. Now, they're not going to look like what you're seeing here in that there's no look and feel to this page because everybody's own websites have different colors, different images on the backgrounds and things like that. So if you were to get a web page from us, all of that look and feel would be implemented within the web page that we produce. So we actually host these web pages on a secure website, and that's why we have this HTTPS, the S being for secure. So it is a secure website, and you've got the little padlock there being locked to show that it is a secure site. Typically what would happen is you would have your website and on one of your web pages there would be a link that says click here to make a donation. That link would then take you to the page that we've set up for you on our website. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through um, the fairly basic screen um, with the, the general options and then I'll be discussing some of the extra features and things that you can have that may or may not be part of the base page. Some of our earlier web pages um, had certain options, but in time since then, we've added extra facilities and things like that. If you have a web page that perhaps doesn't have some of the features that I mentioned, um, it would be possible at a cost to actually implement those things. Um, a lot of the things that I'll discuss now will be if you order a new web page from us, and you haven't had one before, then these things will actually come as part of what you get as part of the package. On top of that, there may be some extra things that you want your page to do that's a little bit out of the ordinary, and those things would typically um, attract another cost on top of it because it takes extra time to set those things up. So I'm going to work my way through this page. Now, we can't probably see it all. Oh, yep, yeah, that's the whole page. I've had to shrink it down because of our limited resolution during the webinar. So typically, we'll put in our details here. And because I've actually used this page before, you can see that it's already going to bring up 
the details. So rather than me having to go through each of those things, it's automatically put those in from the last time I made a pretend donation on the web page. But typical details are exactly the same sort of thing that we see on the donor record in Donman. So name, address details, at least one phone number here. You can see we've got an asterisk on one, so we need at least one phone number. And of course, we need an email address. If the donor happens to know what their donor number is, they can type it in there. And then when that gets imported into Donman, it can use that number to make sure that the donation is recorded against the correct person. So after they put in all their details up the top about themselves, then the next part is to put information about their donation. Now, in this case, we've got a few of these radio buttons for options. That's purely optional. You don't have to have that. Um, one way or another, we can put any amount in there by clicking on other, and I can say I want to give them $150. Okay, here we have a list of options of where they can donate to. Now, if you get a current page, then you are actually in charge of those um, fields or those options there, and I will show you a little bit later how you can modify the list there. If you're on an older page, you may need to get us to modify those to, um, those options for you. So perhaps when your Christmas appeal is no longer active, you might want us to set up an option there for your tax appeal, like I've got down there for tax appeal 2018. But if you've got the dynamic campaign facility, then you can change that at any time you like. So it could be on the weekend, it could be any time. You don't have to wait for us to do it and respond to your request. Okay. Now, there is one option here where it is most needed. And when Gary shows you how to do the import, you can set that one up to say that I'm not going to specify an actual Donman campaign. I'm going to leave it blank. So when the data is imported into Donman, there is an option on the screen that says, if the campaign has been left blank, where do you want it to go? And what that means is that rather than you having to change it on the website, Perhaps when your current appeal changes from Christmas to tax, when you do your next import, you can just say, okay, anything where it's not been supplied on the website, I want that now to go to a different campaign. Okay, so I then have to choose my credit card type, and in this case, I've got Visa and MasterCard. And with a, any new web page that we do, we would typically process all credit card donations via a gateway, which means that by the time that you've actually um, uh, downloaded onto the Donman, the donation's already in your bank account. In fact, as soon as they've sort of pressed submit, within a few seconds, that money is in your bank account, and you will actually get a, an email to indicate that a payment has been made. If you're on one of our older web pages, then it's possible that it will simply record the details of the credit card and download those as encrypted. And then when the import is done that Gary's going to show you, there would be a decryption key there, and it would then decrypt that and enter that as a donation into your Mudon file as though you had typed that in with the credit card details. Now, clearly that's not the best way to go. It's much better if you have a gateway. So anybody getting a new page would automatically be able to use a gateway, and we can retrofit that to older systems if they're not currently doing that, with some limitations, of course. Now, I'm just going to use a bogus number that I know will get through. The name, I'll just put my name in. It's already been used before. Um, the number, I'll just make one up from the back of the card. And I've got an expiry date there that's expired, so I'll just change that. Now, you can also have an option there to say whether you would like them to sign up as a, um, an ongoing monthly donation. So from my drop down list here, I've got monthly. You could also perhaps have things like quarterly or yearly donations as well. If you do that, then it will still make the first donation right here and now at the time and debit their credit card immediately. But when it gets downloaded into Donman, what it will do is it will create a pledge record as an auto deduction for your auto deduction or for your regular payments. And then when that is next due to make a payment, that will then get used. Now, again, if you 
um, get a new web page now, you will also get what we call the donation processing gateway, which means that you can use Donman as an actual um, gateway or like a, an FBOS machine, so that when you enter a credit card onto Donman as a, a normal batch when you're entering your own donations, it can go out to the gateway and process it and say, yep, that worked or no, that failed immediately. So that will come with it. And it's there simply because any of those auto deduction um, that come from your web, it won't actually send down the credit card details. You will send a token. And the only way to process an auto deduction with a token is to do it using the gateway. So that way you would actually have to use the donation processing gateway on your system. Okay, now what would typically happen at this stage is when I su click submit, that would go out to the gateway. Assuming that it all worked, then the donor, me in this case, would actually receive a message to say thank you for your donation and you can actually word what it is they get. One of the options that we've uh, introduced recently and would probably cost extra a little bit is that we can actually send a receipt via email at that time, which means that you don't have to do anything at your end. When you download the donation, it just goes through, but it doesn't get receipted at that time because they've already been sent their email uh, receipt. Um, there's only at this stage two or three uh, of our clients with web pages that are actually doing that. But again, that's probably something that for most organizations it could be retrofitted. Okay, so when I click on submit, what this is going to do, it, no. oh, okay, now, this is something that um, we have been having some issues with our pages, and I thought the fact that I was actually able to get onto our web page meant that everything was going to be okay. So this is going to cause us a little bit of grief, but essentially um, I would have got that message to say thank you for your donation, and what would also happen is the client, or I guess us, would receive an email saying there has been a donation made and depending on what details are included, it may include the amount and the actual um, details of who it was. So that may trigger you to say, okay, I want to now go and download that. Um, although if you're getting a lot of donations all at once, there's no point downloading each one as an individual donation. Um, you might wait to the end of the day if you're getting several in the day or even perhaps do it once a week, depending on um, how frequently the donations are coming in and also how you're doing the receipting. If they get the receipt straight away, then that's fine. But if you're downloading the information and sending the receipt out, then you probably want to get that turned around within two or three days. Okay, now the other part um, that we need to cover, uh, oh sorry, one of the options that isn't on this screen and typically most of the web pages would have them is an opt-in or an opt-out. Uh, option there so that people can say, uh, yes, I would like further correspondence or don't email me or don't correspond with me again. Other options uh, is that you can make it responsive, which means that if you're trying to do that on a, uh, say, an iPod, an iPad or on a smartphone, then it can actually shrink and do everything for that. So that again would be uh, additional. Some places like to tailor it a little bit more in that they might have certain questions that they want a response to. That sort of information can then be downloaded and would typically go probably into something like a, a code pool record to say, yes, they've answered with this question or with that question as well. Um, all right, now at this stage, this one that we're looking at here is actually on our secure website. There's nothing around it, but normally, as I said, you would have the same look and feel. So when they click on a button to take you to this web page, as far as they could see, apart from looking at the URL at the top, it would look like all of your other pages. However, there is another option, and that is for us to do a very basic page like we're seeing here, and actually embed that within one of your own pages. And I've spoken to St. Mary's House of Welcome and they've agreed to let me use their web page as an example. So this is St. Mary's House of Welcome. You can see it's their own website and their own page. But when I scroll this down, this information that we see in the middle here is basically our information. 
So even though the whole page appears as though it's from St. Mary's page, the bit in the middle is on our page. Um, there's also this other option down the bottom here, which is a capture, which we've implemented so that um, anybody who's testing um, stolen credit cards can't just use a bot to actually throw like a hundred or a thousand donations at it at once to test whether those um, credit cards are valid. Okay, so assuming that you've now got your information um, from the uh, email to say there's been a donation. The next part of it is that you need to go down and download that at some stage. So I've got a, a link here to our admin page. And so I need to log in here with hopefully the right, yeah, there's demo admin. And I think I've got the right one. Okay. So this is a typical web donations administration page. So um, if that donation that I put through had gone through successfully, um, then uh, I would have been able to use the option here to download the current web donation file. This would produce an XML file. Um, now it's quite possible that when I, well, I, I don't have any donations in there at the moment. So we've got these options for the second last, well, the previous one, the second previous, and the third previous. So if I click on this, if we're lucky, it will work. Okay, so in this case, this part of it has actually worked. And you can see what we call an XML file for extended markup language file. That's how we prepare the information for download. So you can see all the information. Um, I put this one in, in, I think this was from earlier today. So you can see all the details here. Um, in order to actually import that into Donman, I need to save this. Now, in this case, there is only the one, but had there been multiple donations, then I would be able to scroll through those and see as many donations as I'd done. When I choose to download the current file, it then says, okay, that's the end of that batch. Don't confuse that with the Donman batch, but that's the end of our XML batch. And we can see here the batch number is 129. Um, so any donations after I've done this download, would then go into batch number 130. So you can't accidentally download the same donations twice if you're only downloading the current file. Um, but as I said, if you for some reason thought you'd downloaded it, you'd saved it, but you don't know where it's gone or you've lost it, you can always go to the previous, the second previous, and the third previous. Now in my case, because I'm on um, Chrome, I need to go across, hmm, this might be a little bit hard because the, uh, the panel for go to webinar is in the way. So I can go to here, I go to more tools, and then I can save page as. Uh, if you're on a different browser, then of course, there'll be slightly different options for how you save it. But I think we, we cover that in the manual anyway. So here's the name that it's gonna to go to by default. But when I last downloaded them, I downloaded them into a subdirectory under DM work called WebDon. So it's a good place to hide those things from the normal day-to-day -day EM work stuff. And now I've actually already got batch 129 because I downloaded that earlier on. But if I wanted to override that, I could just call it 129. If I put in a new donation and successfully downloaded that, then I would put that into web batch 130. And so that would then be the name that goes into the import that Gary is going to show you. So I'll just save that and override it. All right, so I'll just maximize again. So going back to our previous screen, the next thing we need to do is this modify campaigns. So this is where we can actually change the different lists that we had in that drop down options. If I go next, so at the moment, these are the options that I've got. So Christmas appeal, where it's most needed, autumn appeal, tax appeal, etc., etc. Now you'll notice for this where it is most needed, the campaign code here, which should normally correspond to a campaign code in Domain, it's been left blank. So that means that when you do the import, you can specify where anything without a campaign code can go to. Now, I can add new options down here, or I can change these. So if I wanted to say, well, I don't want this one anymore, I can modify that. And I'll change that maybe to Christmas 2018 if I'm being really sort of uh, way ahead of myself. 
and I'll just save those modified values. And um, so now it's coming up with that. And you can also see we've got these numbers here which determine the order that they appear in the menu. So quite often people would actually probably put where it's most needed first. So in order to do that, they would modify this one. Well, actually, you can't make that one, I don't think we can make it zero. So we'd probably make that one maybe a seven. So it would come up as autumn appear, Christmas appear, uh, actually where it's most needed first. So let me modify that one. I'm gonna make that a seven and save that. Now, if I go um, back to admin page, oh, okay, it wants me to log in again. Um, Demo admin. Um, okay. Oh, actually, I probably didn't need that anymore because we've done everything we need here. But if I go back to our other web page, uh, the donate page, and if I look at the drop down list now, uh, okay, so that hasn't actually updated at the stage. So um, some of these things, sometimes they take a little while before they actually go through. Oh no, sorry, I apologize. Yes, it has, because it's got where it's most needed first. Okay, so that's it. There are a number of options. And if you want something additional in the, uh, over and above what we get with a fairly standard page, then you can always ask us and say, well, what extra would it cost for that? So. I'm going to hand over to Gary at this stage, and he's going to now take you through the process of importing those downloaded donations. Thanks, Murray, and welcome everyone. So, Murray showed you the online component to the donation web page, and, and you know, putting a donation in, or trying to putting a donation in, uh, managing those, etc. The part in DOM in then is to actually import the transaction. Because it comes from a page that uh, we're controlling, uh, we have got uh, you know the concept of how the actual fields lay out and which fields are there, how they need to match up in DOM and et cetera, so that at the time we get to the import, everything should come in exactly how it's uh, supposed to come in. There are a number of organizations that have their own web page and they still want to be able to import the donations using the general um, web donation import program that we've got. And that can be accomplished as long as we've got the format of the file that matches on me. And uh, Murray or I can certainly help uh, anyone who needs to do that. So in order to import the donations, I'm going to donation processing. Most menus nowadays have the import web donations on the left-hand side because web donations also include and the peer-to-peer -peer donations and things like that. So if I go to web donations, and in this case, it's the import web donations. So it's just the general import uh, program for John Men for, for these sorts of files. So when I go in, you'll see at the top, it's uh, telling me that it reads the uh, XML data file downloaded from the data manager website. So from there, we go through and say, okay, because I've already opened this file uh, previously or this folder, it's remember that, and as Murray was saying, when you save the batches, look on the actual um, web page and try and match those batch numbers so that when you're looking at this folder later, if there's something missing, you'll know that there's something we haven't downloaded from the website. So otherwise, it's very hard to maintain or manage those because if you just you know, number it sequentially, uh, there's a good chance that the numbers aren't going to line up. So if I choose that as my file, That'll go in. The decryption key here is only necessary in the case of people who've got some of the older web pages that aren't yet using a gateway. Yeah. And as Murray was saying before, when the transaction is put into the web page, uh, the credit card number is stored as an encrypted number, and you would need a matching decryption key that um, would be generated by one of the uh, web programming uh, people. Uh, in order to actually be able to read those credit card numbers. If, you're not, if your card's um, wrong or your decryption key's wrong, uh, it certainly will just say bad luck, I can't read the card numbers. As we go down the screen from there, as Murray is saying, on the options for the web page, there's one that said where it was most needed and it didn't have a, um, a campaign code that matched what was in on me. So this is where I could then go through, is that if that happens, and it may be. So it might be general 
like mine is, or it might be Gen Don or whatever. Uh, or you might have one specifically for web donations that are, are not specified. If the person has on the web page said that they want to help uh, set up a recurring payment, so they've selected like the monthly option that was on the web page, then I can choose the campaign here that the system's then going to create the page record for, for a donor. Okay. If we want a donation type, so the donation type is, a, is a, an additional field that goes on as part of the donation record, which in this case will show me that even though I've got money that is just going into say my general donation campaign, that it's showing me that this one was generated from the website. So I've just got something that tells me that that, that was the source of that donation for all purposes. From there, as we go down the screen, we've got you know what donor type. Most of the records that give online will be individuals, not uh, businesses. So we get that like if donor type is going to be an individual. Because it's, I mean, 99% sure that there'll always be a person's name. So if we credit it, if we need to change it back to the company sometime later, uh, we can do that. If there's a company name, um, then the system will utilize that anyway. Okay, the source of the donor, the mail code, and if I want to have an extra code. If for some reason I've got an address that's incomplete, the system's giving me the option then to make the mail code. Okay, so then have that code. Okay. So you can see here's my list of codes, and this is where I normally have the web donations to identify that. For this one, I'll say no, I'm not going to use a source code. As we go through, if the address is incomplete, I can make the mail code no mail, because ideally, if I can't mail the person, I may have an email address. But um, if I haven't got the postal address for most things, I'd say no, I want to set them to be no mail. Most of the web pages, and actually I think all of them, have got those fields as mandatory. So, you know, for the address, suburb, say, postcode, etc. So, this one pretty much shouldn't be utilized because we should be getting that. Saying that, of course, we cannot control what people type in on the web page. You know, so, if somebody doesn't want you to know their details or they're just being, you know, silly, they'll just put, you know, ABCD, FGH, or whatever it will be. And the system um, will just say, yes, there's data there. It can't validate the data because you know, names are spelled differently and all sorts of things. So the content of what you get sometimes from web donations, be it um, the Donmen web pages or online peer-to-peer, -peer, any of those things, um, quite often you'll see some very dodgy data come through, um, depending on you know what people have been doing on the web page. Most of the time we find that uh, it comes in fairly clean. If perchance we've imported the data and then find out that there's something you know that doesn't look quite right, um, we can sort of manage that. But if you look at the actual XML file from the web page before you save it, uh, you'll be able to see if there's anything that looks a bit strange there. If that does happen, you can always look at the board job and Murray and I'll help you um, remove that um, record from the system. So there might, again, have just been somebody testing card numbers or just being silly on the website. And that's that they haven't put in anything that's a, that's a real name or address. Okay. From there, if the money um, has been banked already, so it's going you know, to come via the gateway, then they'll all be pre banked anyway. From there, as we go down the screen, oh, sorry, if there's no name or address available, and again, this shouldn't happen, I can choose the donor number, which is normally my anonymous donor that I can put in the donation or then be credited to that person. Okay, so it'd be very rare that that would happen as well. Okay, has the batch been banked? Yes. The system will automatically then create these two files. One's the RD web error file and the other one's the log file. So the error file will show me anything that comes up uh, and says, you know, this donation wasn't read or whatever it may be. The log file will just give me a full log of everything that's happened. From there, I've got the options to decide on duplicates by email, so normally yes, and by similar name and postcode. So normally, in order to maximise, you know, finding existing donors in my um, data that have now made a web donation, uh, normally I'd have both of these on. Okay. The option after that has been added 
sort of recently, which says when there's an existing data found, update their contact data, which means the data from the website will be used to update your existing data in Donmere. This may be um, you know, all right in the case where somebody's changed an address or they've just updated a phone number or something like that, then that will update the domain data. If you said, look, I don't want that to happen, then you can just say no here and we can update and check records you know, after the actual import and do any housekeeping that we need to from there. Have we done a backup? Anything we do in bulk in domain will always ask you that question. Normally your backups are done on your server overnight and I think in previous webinars we've sort of shown people how you can quickly you know, uh, create a zip file of the data folder um, which would be a copy of your data anyway. So if I say yes and then yes to begin. Okay, in this case it's saying I'm processing the same file twice because I haven't renamed my um, XML file to uh, a different name. So if I say yes and that's fine. The system will now go through saying, look, here's what's coming in um, from the actual uh, XML file, and it's saying this is a potential um, duplicate donor. So if it's the same donor, so I can see, yes, it's the same street, etc. just double click on the record and confirm that as the donor to update. So I'm now crediting the donation to these people that are already on the system. Okay, so yes. Okay, so then you'll get the screen like this to change its red for records. Let's just go back to there. One new record's been added, so it only showed me three duplicates as we go through, and existing records found, so we found the three of them. Okay, the data's uh, complete, so I can now say yes, that's okay. And this is where it'll then come up and show me if there's anything wrong. So you can see up the top of the screen here, it's got this is the error file. So I'm saying, okay, I found the donor. For the same, there was no campaign that existed for News 26. This will normally happen if the campaign that I've set up on the website doesn't match exactly the campaign code in Donmere. So we'll go and have a look at that and see what we can do. So if I close that and go, okay, I've got that now to my message. And it, the log file then showing you anything else. So in this case, where I've selected the donor, okay. Everything that's gone through, if there was an update, so in this case it's found Dana Wheeler and it's changed the home phone number for nothing to the number that came from the website, and the same for the email. So the log file is really just showing you everything that's happened. The one to look at um, primarily would be your error file because that's telling me something's not right. If I then close those down, if I need to, I can print that out and have a look at the donors and make sure that um, everything looks good as far as you know what's happened with them. If I close that, I'm now finished. So where it was telling me on the actual log file, uh, the error file, sorry, that the campaign didn't exist. So what I would need to do now is go into my campaign setup and have a look at my code. So if I go down, okay. So I can see in this case, the message that came up from the uh, error file said that the campaign was news 26 but in my case it's news space 26 and so <laughs> well, lots of times people get trapped by this where the campaign code is similar but it's not exactly the same so you know uh, everything to do with computers unfortunately is, is very literal you know a space a dice a dash anything that's different is different so the two options I would have is because I've already read the donations in I could go and um, from the XML file, uh, enter that donation manually so that I can choose the campaign. Or if this does happen to you, the two options you've got, you can edit the XML file if you've got a program that does that. Or worst case, if you need to log a support job, Murray or I can help you do that. And that, that way we could um, add that through. So because I've already read that file in, if I go back to my processing, so it's showing me down the, sorry, down the bottom here that there's three donations in the temporary file. So three of the four donations have already been read in. And the options that I would have at this point is that if I want to edit the XML file or edit the campaign in .pen, whichever one was wrong, so that I could import that again. What I don't want to do is import the donations that have already been imported. So I'm going to, I'm going to double up and 
I'm just going to create a horrible snowball um, problem for myself if that goes through. If I were to go through, look at my file, so again, web donation folder, and here's my XML file here. Okay, so in this case, I've got a program that will let me do this. So if I go across, I can see all the details that are in the XML file. So I can see my very first one there, the campaign is Muse 26 with no space in it. So that's lining up with exactly what it showed on the error a report to show me there's something wrong, this one didn't import. So if I said, okay, look, I, I don't want to do this manually, what I could do in this case is put the space in the name, but what I then have to remember is the ever three transactions here have already been imported. So I don't want to import those again. The XML program we have got here, the editor, will allow me to go through a little bit laboriously, unfortunately, <laughs> and select those transactions that have already been imported. And I can then delete those. Okay, so I'm basically, if I have a look now, I'm just left with the one for Mr. Wheeler that was the New Year's 26 campaign that didn't import. If I then do file, say that. In this case, I don't want to save it as the same name, so I might call it A or version 2 or whatever it is, so I can go through. That's sort of editing the XML file directly, and as I said, sometimes uh, it may be easier just to get the details from the XML file and just, especially if the donor's already been created now, and just ed, uh, enter the donation manually. Okay. If I go back in my system, sorry. So what I can do now is go back into donation processing, web donations, import web donations. Okay, so now I've got my 128A batch. Once you've been through this process, you can see the screen's already got all of the details to it. So the very first web donation file you import, you'll have to choose all these options, like which campaign, etc., all the way through. After that, it's pretty much just enter, enter all the way through because the options normally won't change. Okay. So again, it's found my donor. And say yes. And it's read the one in. So it's saying that's all good now. And you can see I've got no uh, errors, which is exactly what I <laughs> want to have. And my log file. Okay, so it's saying that, okay, yes, it found the existing donor because even if they weren't there, the system would have created them as we go through. At this point here, the donations have gone in just the same as if I would have entered a batch manually. Okay, so it's now showing me I've got my four donations in the temporary file. To validate that, I can go into donation troubleshooting, print a batch listing, and just enter through, do a print preview of my report. Okay, so you can see in this case, I've now got two different batches because the first one that had three gifts in that did import has gone into one. When I've done the second import, it's created in a map of batch. So it doesn't add them to the same batch. And you can see all the details as we go through. And because I've changed the campaign, that's now matched what's in Domain, so that transaction's also been imported. If I had manually uh, manual processing to do now, like credit cards, cash, whatever, I can just go back into record donation and continue as normal, and then do all the normal steps I would uh, in order to finish off that, uh, that processing up to end of day to finish those off. If we were to look at the donor, Wheeler. And at the moment, you can see there's no um, red dollar sign at the bottom to indicate this history, even though I've imported the donation, because at the moment, it is still sitting in the new donation file. So if I look at the donor, you'll see the tab that's showing is batch donations, not donations. Okay. So everything about this is indicating to me that it, it is part of the temporary file, but nothing else has happened with it yet. So we haven't actually got to the point of doing end of day and finishing that off. Okay, 
the last of my um, records that were in the XML file was this particular person here who said that they wanted to make a regular gift. So you can see when I look at their record, even though the money's still not showing yet because I haven't you know, don't finish the end of day, but the pledge button is in red. So the system's now showing me that it created the pledge record with the auto deduct, which was the campaign showing on the import screen. How many times per year? So the date they started, because it's um, monthly, it's saying that date of next gift will automatically be um, one month from the start date, because there's no way to, to sort of control that at this point. Okay. So it's not a fixed pledge, but then all the details that came from the website will be imported into here. Okay. If a chance we've um, been using a gateway, then the token that's generated from the gateway, which will be starting with either a TE or a TS or a TF, um, for Australia, it'll be um, the first two, so it'll be a token e-way or a token from SecurePay, or in the case of New Zealand, it could be a token for flow to cash. And so that will automatically go into the credit card number, and that's what's used for you know, subsequent payments as we go through from there. So if I were then say, okay, I've entered those, I've got no manual processing to do, I have no banking to do in this case because they've all gone through the gateway. Yeah. If per chance we weren't doing that, as Murray was saying before, because um, you're using an older page that's not using gateway, then you would have to, uh, at the time you do the import, you'd have to say the money hasn't been banked, and then you could include that as part of your banking credit listings for the day, your credit card file, whatever it might be. Whether the donations are marked to get a receipt, yes or no, would you depend on what the person has checked on the website. If we try and jump any of these steps, just like normal processing, the system will tell me that no, there's a step I haven't completed. So in this case, I'm going to go straight down to ledger posting report. Okay. So it's now telling me system files indicate the receiving has not been done since the last donation. Okay, so one of my donations, the person has said, yes, I need a receipt number. I need to get a receipt sent out. And as Murray was saying, there, there is the sort of shift of late where people are getting the receipts generated straight from the website rather than putting it into Donman and then having the merge and, and print out the receipts and, and send them as you would do normally. So in this case, I can just go through. I don't need to do the actual merge for this demonstration. Yeah, so normally I would have opened my receipt, done my merging, finished that off and then continued on with my ledger report. Okay, so I have my, my uh, report and in this case, the one I'm running is splitting up based on the method of payment and then the ledger. Okay, so different people have different reports to, to um, do this. Some just have the, where it shows the ledger code and how much money is banked and pre banked, etc. So once I've done that, I don't have any refer to's, I'm hoping, in this particular case. So I should be able to now go down and run the end of day update. Okay, so in this case, this one doesn't have print preview, so it's normally forcing me to print that out. As we go through, this is now updating the donor, donation, everything. So. It's come up now at the bottom of the screen. I've got the showing the updates been run. There's zero donations in the temporary file, so everything is updated. So if we go back and have a look at our donors again now, okay, so my donor with the pledge is now there, and the dollar signs in red show me that the money is now part of the donation record, not the batch donation. Okay, so everything about it is there, and as Murray said, from there, because the pledge is earmarked as a auto deduction. This record will be picked up when I do the normal uh, monthly run or quarterly run, whatever it might be, for um, your auto deduction. So generally people run this once a month, but there are some organizations that run it fortnightly, et cetera, depending on um, you know dates and things to get things done or just the size of the actual file that we're trying to process. Yeah. So that in a, in a nutshell is the, the actual importing part of it. There's not very many things that will go wrong. And of course, if it does go wrong, uh, Mario and I are here to help. And um, there's not too
too many things that you know we can't fix up. I mean, um, for those people who've got some web pages, the last day or so we've had a few hosting issues, etc. Where from different networks you could get to the web pages, and from the internal networks sometimes you couldn't. Where you could if you're doing it from your phone or something like that. So there was something uh, strange going on there. So we're uh, so sorry that that's happened, but hopefully that's all fixed now. But everything else should tick in fairly easily. So the management for the web page itself and the campaign is sort of paramount to getting this to come in nice and cleanly, so that we're we're not having to stop and you know do all of the uh, mucking around with the donations or edit, entering them all manually. So if we've recorded it, you know, from the website, import them, saves a whole lot of work. Anyway, I'll uh, hand back to Lisa now for uh, any questions we've got on on today's webinar. Uh, thanks, Gary. We do have a few. Um, if you are taking a pledge donation, can there be more than one campaign to select when importing? No, because you've only got the one record online. If the person had perchance made two separate transactions online, then yes, that is possible, but you can't get it to do it at the time you're doing the import. Okay, great. Um, and is there any address validation when you're doing the import? No, because it is unfortunately, it is just at that point, it's just importing the data that's there. It's not doing any validation at all. Um, one last question. Can you give us a rough estimate on uh, the cost of um, form development for a website? Or is that a question for offline? Uh, probably offline because there, there, there is a base price for a standard page, but it depends on you know what people want from there. So um, you know whether you're, you're having it in the um, frame like Murray showed with us and Mary's uh, House of Welcome. Um, or you're getting the full page with graphics on it and things like that. There's there's thousands of variables, unfortunately. Um, but normally, when you put in a request, you can then get a quote for a page, and um, the web developers can look at what you want. And from there, sort of, there's always a bit of to and fro for uh, you know changes and things like that to um, get to a final price. Okay. Nice. However, if if you wanted a base price. Um, I think the base price is something like 1950 plus GST. Now that will get you a fairly standard page with just some of those options that I mentioned that were part of the base page. Um, any additional changes or options that you want would be in addition to that. There is also a hosting fee that people need to be aware of, which I think is I think it's $65 a month paid quarterly or somewhere around that figure. So they're the sort of base figures, and then there could be extras on top of that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, I think that is the only question. That's the last of the questions. Um, I do. I want to send a thank you to Gary and Murray um, for um, for the informative webcast that they've um, presented today. Um, if you would like to get any further information or a quote for uh, adding the online donation module, if you could contact. Um, our team um, on info underscore donman at advsol.com. Um, I will also ask that uh, when you disconnect from this webcast today, if you can take a few moments to complete our survey that pops up. Uh, it's just a few quick questions and it'll provide us um, with some valuable feedback on our webcast program. So thanks again. Um, in the, uh, thank you again, everybody, for your feedback. Um, and we will have a recording of uh, this webcast as well as previous webcasts on our uh, Donman website. The address there is www.donman.net.au. Um, you can find that under resources, recorded webcasts, uh, and that's accessible via the client support portal. Uh, and we'll also um, post a link in our monthly newsletter. And finally, our next webcast is on uh, the Tuesday, the 8th of May and we'll be covering word mail merging. And details are available on our website if you'd like some more information about that now. So that uh, concludes our webcast today. Thank you again to our presenters and to everyone for attending. We'll see you next time.